Uh, let's talk about Lincoln Riley really quick. And whew, this has been a, quite the whirlwind for him in the past, what, four months or so? Five, well, I guess six months uh, since he left. I guess it was December when he left to, uh, to go to USC. So maybe six, seven months, somewhere around there. He decided to leave Oklahoma for USC. Now, he was highly rumored to be going to LSU, and there were talks there, of course. He did talk to LSU about that job, but he was not exactly the happiest that Oklahoma did not talk to him about the move to the SEC. He was blindsided in that situation. So he goes and he chooses USC over LSU because at USC, for one, I don't know if you can consider them a sleeping giant, but they have not been good in quite some time. You have a chance to rebuild a big national brand that has no real competition. Like in the Pac-12, once USC gets rolling, that's it for everybody else. So I don't know that he really wanted to take the harder path. I mean, obviously, people have seen you can win national titles at LSU. That's why Brian Kelly took the job. But Lincoln Riley, I think, had first dibs on that LSU job, and he took the easier path. How much easier is that path now? USC, from everything that has been reported, USC did not talk to Lincoln Riley about this move to the Big Ten. I think they decided, oh, if we want to really compete in this space, if we want to pay Lincoln Riley $10 million a year, if we want to be able to afford NIL deals, et cetera, whatever, if we want to be able to keep up with the Joneses, we got to be one of the Joneses. We have to move to the Big Ten where we're going to get a gigantic media rights contract so that we can continue to pull in this money. It seems pretty simple. If you're going to spend money, you got to find a way to make it. And moving to the Big Ten is the way to make it, but that is now two times in the past year that Lincoln Riley has been blindsided at a job. Does he find a way to leave USC and, <laughs> and go join somewhere else? Uh, it, I guess it all depends on your access to the playoff at that point, which will actually get us over to, I guess, well, let's stay on Lincoln Riley. I mean, how how irritated does this guy have to be? He has got to, if I were him, I'd be so livid right now. And obviously, he's got it made right now. He's perfectly fine. But Oklahoma fans used to be really upset about having to play an 11 a.m. kickoff pretty regularly because they were the big brand that Fox would put on for their big noon kickoff. Now, not only is he going to have to play 11 a.m. games, he's going to have to play 9 a.m. body clock games. So 9 a.m. Pacific, he'll have to play some of those, and then he'll have to go the next week and play a 10 p.m. Eastern time game, et cetera, to fit into these contract negotiations. I can't imagine that that's going to be easy to prepare for, right? This is not an easy thing to do, so I am sure that he is just livid. Uh, and he's still young. He's got a long ways to go. Like, does he does he just decide to move on to the NFL? I mean, at this point, I don't know of a lot of coaches that wouldn't. And he will certainly have options. But we'll we'll see how this season goes and what he ends up doing before USC jumps over to the Big Ten. Again, that won't happen until 2024. But whew, if I were Lincoln Riley, I'd be mad as hell. I mean, it's so mad. So mad. Uh, Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.